Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to share my daily drivers. I'll record a video of my desktop showing the stuff that I use from mobile testing devices to audio to mouse to keyboard and what is, what is my <clears throat> daily computer for mobile application and back in application development as well what tools editors I'm using on what development area from back end to web page to uh, Android and uh, at the end of the video I'll give you a, a reason why I started programming mobile platform to begin with it kind of a tangled on my 9 to 5 day job and interest to uh, get the best out of a platform, a daily platform that uh, is with me from the morning to the evening, etc. And naturally, it is mobile platform, not computer platform. So I found multiple use cases on the mobile to uh, be interested in the development to be a programmer for mobile systems and why did I shift from iOS into Android when I decided to start okay so that's gonna be the focus of today and uh, we can start from the screen what you're seeing is the uh, the specs of the MacBook Pro but uh, let's start Okay, first, before we go into the uh, my hardware setup, recording a video of the hardware setup, let's take a look at the uh, specifications of my daily driver MacBook Pro and also my daily driver editors. So what you're looking at is a specification of a MacBook Pro, which is my daily driver for mobile back end and web page development this is what i do besides on my this is what i use on the side of my nine to five job so on my nine to five job i'm using the the work desktop which is thinkpad a 16 inch version it has 64 gigabytes of memory my macbook pro has 32 gigabytes of ssd internal memory they both have terabyte of internal memory. Okay, that's the minimum these days because you are gonna be filled with uh, editors, programs to be installed. You're gonna be filled with media data to be stored, etc., etc. And let's not yet go into external SSDs and why they exist, why I use them. But okay, I kind of shifted telling more about my nine to five job computer than my mobile development tool of the macbook pro so let's focus on this one now this is a beast of a machine and that is the pure simple reason why i use this okay about a year ago i upgraded from 13 inch version of the macbook pro into the m1 pro of a 14 inch version and it's been a breeze to code with this machine it is perfect no other words on my end especially while i'm using android studio which is kind of a heavy setup and requires power because this actually runs emulators simulators <clears throat> and my applications actually have the most amount of code to be compiled so it requires power and you know what the macbook pro it doesn't even sweat on those tasks the thinkpad as my uh, nine to five job computer it has more in mathematical means it has more everything it has more ssd of uh, for the ram memory it has 64 gigabyte yeah, i believe it is about it's coming to be four years old but it is it has i7 or i9 but the computing power 
even though in numbers it should be at least as good as this MacBook, but it is not. The fan is going all wild with heavy computing tasks and uh, it kind of, a, I don't know, throttles at some point due to heat issues that the Intel typically brings when you use the Intel CPUs. Okay, it is good, but not as good as the MacBook Pro. So as simple as I said, I use this on my mobile and back backend development and the ThinkPad is for my 9 to 5 job. Okay, so I nearly missed this one. What are my development editors and why? Okay, Android. I use Android Studio for mobile Android mobile development. I think it is a perfect tool. Somebody might say that it is heavy and uh, it is not as good as something else, but I'm used to it. It does the job. I know where things are and I do tend to like JetBrain tools. Okay, I started in the early days when I started coding, I always used JetBrain's tools. Okay, if I did Python, I used PyCharm. It was perfect and they kind of resemble each other. It was a easy step to come into Android Studio because everything is pretty similar and uh, the setup kind of logically follows the same reasoning how they design their editors. Android Studio with the emulators, simulators, it is a daily driver for my mobile development. I, I love it. Somebody might say something else, but hey, I love it. So when I do backend coding, my development environment is KTOR. So, okay, I, <clears throat> I maintain KTOR backend for, for my application and for my uh, personal use. But for that one, I use actually, again, JetBrains tool because it is pretty similar. So it is the IntelliJ idea. So this is kind of a, like I told the PyCharm, Android Studio, and another third version of a, a editor, which resembles each other and uh, kind of they are the same and have the same capabilities and design base is the same. That's why I use this and uh, it's perfect for the back-end development and uh, I like it. IntelliJ idea for back-end KTOR development. I don't know what you're using if you even like JetBrain tools but they seem to fit me nicely. Then we come to a, a little bit different solution for front-end development. Okay, Visual Studio is something that I use with to maintain my homepage, hold2run.com, which is my developer. It's just kind of a front face where, where I have to keep up the public pages of my apps, uh, privacy policies, everything kind of a, you know, when you release an app, it needs to have a public face and you need to have a public place to upkeep your uh, uh, certain certain parameter files, etc., etc., which are kind of a tangled through the back end, front end, etc., into the apps also, links and so on, so on. Visual Studio Code, anyhow. This is more lightweight editor to uh, code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript-based solutions. I don't think this is perfect. It's not, if you're looking for full, fully fledged editor, which it has kind of a supportive functions to quickly find bugs, quick go jump functions from between tasks, etc. This is very lightweight on my mind. And it is not as supportive as the, uh, the JetBrain editors that I use, the Android Studio and the uh, IntelliJ idea. So, but hey, I'm, I'm, true, I'm not truly front-end developer and my pages are really lightweight, so the code base 
for me to upkeep add something is minimal so I, I'm doing fine on HTML, CSS and JavaScript though not really my strongest area I just do it because the apps need a, 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 a face, public face, home page, etc. Okay, now we can jump into the, the work desk and uh, start recording the video of my hardware setups. Okay guys, here is my daily working setup. Let's dive into the keyboard. Okay, thank you, microphone. My keyboard, none other than Apex Steel Series. Let's listen. Okay. I told you, I, I'll tell you why I started coding. This is the reason, just because of Apex Steel Series keyboard. Okay, that's not purely true, but it is so satisfying keyboard that it kind of a keeps me, makes me push a little bit extra because I, I just enjoy coming onto it and start coding with it. That's why it has these fancy colors and etc. And it sounds perfectly. Okay. That is my screen of a HP 27 inch. It's not high resolution screen by any means, but it is okay. I don't need any, let's say like a tool, I don't need dual displays because of MacBook does the job with these multi-screen swiping and uh, normally I have a couple setups from anywhere from one to three setups on different screens. There is my daily computer. Like you can see, MacBook Pro, this is the 14 inch. When I stop my job with the ThinkPad 16 inch ThinkPad, I'll just come in here and gently place my MacBook on top of it and start coding my plug, plug in my screens, plug in my keyboard, plug in the power, and I'm good to go with my mobile application development. And of course, if I want to listen to some music on, on the days, the boss, I, my wife, some, this, is, this was a Christmas gift for my wife, and uh, I just put on some good music like a Detroit Rock City or some other, I don't know, techno, all the way from techno to rock music, and uh, it's perfect. So, a cup of coffee. Hey, I can't code without a cup of coffee. Like, I need it every day. Couple of multiple cups of coffee. That's it. You need to have it. You know what I did? I took this from a microphone and I placed it like that. And now I have a coffee holder, coffee cup holder. Nice. Here is my testing device. I use Samsung Galaxy devices. This is Samsung Galaxy S1. What I'm holding and recording with is Galaxy S22. This year I'll be passing the Galaxy S23. So I'm not renewing. This is perfect for testing. Besides, Galaxy S20 normal Galaxy S21, 22, 23 is the perfect size dri driver for me to uh, keep it in my pocket and it's not too big, it has power, camera is good, memory is good, everything is good. I always stick on Galaxy S 
normal series. Nice. And then my microphone. Look at this one. Hyper X. This is perfect for YouTube video recording. I like the audio sound. It's not the best probably, but it is the nicest looking. Again, the vibrant colors. That's something that I like. It makes me push just a little further because it is not normal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Microphone. Razor. I used to have a Razor keyboard. I don't have it anymore because the Apex Steel series. But anyhow, I stay I stick with the Razer mat. It's okay. So what do I use for my mouse? It is the MX Master 3. Maybe it can focus, maybe not. For my hand this is perfect. It kind of balances everything out. It makes my hand rest and uh, it, my wrist doesn't come too uh, sore after a day, long day with this one. It's ergonomical, it's precise and it's everything that I need. Nice. <clears throat> External SSD. Perfect. Samsung SSD at least 500 gigabyte version. That's like my safe storage. Everything that I back up goes in here from media to code and code projects, etc. Of course, they go up into GitHub, but still, you know, keep your local backups and you're safe. You're good to go. So, Whenever I record videos, I just put these on Panasonic headsets on and I plug the microphone. Okay, Mr. Microphone, come over here. I just plug these in, put them on my head and plug this one in here. And then I can listen my own breathing with these ones. And it's pretty okay. Okay guys, that's my daily setup desktop that I work with from 95 and also after 95 with my beloved MacBook Pro. For mobile, it doesn't get any better than this one. Perfect. I'll never give this computer up. And when it's time to update, I'll just keep this one in here because it changed my life. Okay, now let's go to the end and I'll tell you why I started coding mobile to begin with. Now the question, why did I start coding mobile to begin with? Okay, there are two reasons. I kind of noted that in my 9 to 5 job, I I was always thinking I could somehow mix the, uh, the mobile development into the machinery industry. Okay, that was a fact. I done a couple of apps already. I'll show you an example what what is helping me daily in my operations. And these days there we can also actually implement a mobile connection directly into industrial CPUs, for instance, into Siemens, Rockwell, or some other. So we can kind of a communicate via Wi-Fi and make local or edge-style applications which are being developed these days. So it's going to bring a whole new, uh, mm, let's get, say, an app user experience approach into industry solutions. So 
CPU integrations via mobile to enhance the user experience with the heavy industry machines. That's going to be my primary interest in the future and currently. But as a safety engineer, I mean, I'm working on, on industry field and um, I'm specialized currently at machinery safety, which is kind of a, we have to de develop control system solutions to protect the users to not being killed or injured by the heavy duty machinery because consider them as a big robots which can lift tens of thousands of kilos masses and they could just drop it and kill it or crush somebody with the cylinders so they are heavily safeguarded so i'm also in this kind of a field i need to go into a actual site sometimes to make an audit for instance so one of the use cases that I figured I could make my life a whole lot easier if I could automate the documentation gathering from on-site visits. So let's say we have a 50 to 100 uh, photo documented photos with comments, pre-comments, not solutions yet. And we could just say that, hey, let's generate a report out of this one. Let's automate that one specific task right now it's gonna take a little while there are about 80 images so we'll be back when this is done okay now we have a initial report being compiled from that set of uh, documented photos so when we open it, now we have a word ready to go and all the initial comments being added in here. And now we can just upload this or save it on a computer, whatever, and actually start working with it and finish it. And it's going to be used as the base engineering material for further actions. So. One of the use cases that I kind of, uh, where I entangled the mobile development between my private use cases and the interest into 9 to 5 uh, a daily work operations. There are many other applications, many other use cases, as I told, the more sophisticated are kind of uh, integrating the, uh, the mobile connection into the uh, life of a CPU and fetch, read, write, manipulate the live data within the CPU itself. Even get a piece of code, maybe inject piece of code. Who knows? So that's kind of a, the high tech and this is kind of a daily user experience approach to enhance some specific task of uh, a manual uh, operation without kind of automated report generative system so if you like this you can go and check photo docs in it's in android available and test it out so why mobile then why mobile platform is just a, i mean the uh, my choice of my selection of a choice well, mobile is something that I have always with me. I'm not really interested to uh, produce solutions on PCs or even on MacBooks, etc. Et I'm interested on mobile because it's something that, that I start my day with in the morning and I finish my day in the evening. It's always with me. So if I want to produce a solution that brings most va daily value, it's going to be mobile. That's kind of a, the personal experience of whatever digitalization solution there's supposed to be. That's it. That's why I love mobile. It's always with me. And I can tinker it with my own solutions or someone else's solutions. That's my to-go platform. As simple as that. So 
I started these on iOS, but I pretty quickly shifted into Android just because of programming languages, Kotlin. It's kind of, a, I'm, I was somewhat familiar with Java. Uh, I don't miss Python because Python is, it's not, I don't know, it's good for scientific actions, but not for releasing mobile applications. Okay, Java was kind of familiar. Kotlin is the world top number one programming la language on mobile, especially on Android. So I fell in love with that one pretty fast. It is effective, modern, and I love it. I didn't stick into iOS just because of the, let's call it more strict platform to produce solutions on, while Android is very open and I can see myself doing way more uh, uh, open-minded applications on the Android platform, at least for the near future. There might be a day that I shift into iOS, but if it comes to that, then I, I'll cross over the bridge. For now, Android and multi-platform seems the future for me at this point. Okay, guys, that's all I wanted to share in this video. I hope you liked it and you have had some kind of understanding of my daily uh, uh, drivers and my personal interests. We'll be back.